Uh, this is Joshua Trevino from the Texas Public Policy Foundation, and I am privileged to have with me Evan Smith of the Texas hey, Tribune. Josh. How are you? I'm great. How are you? There's always something to talk about, isn't there? There really, really is, and not just because it's Texas, um, but because things are happening in Texas. Uh, well, so let's I, get started. Uh, lots of interesting things have happened with... Uh, I understand our governor is still in the presidential race. Um, uh, he, he is. Reports of his death have been greatly exaggerated. You and I may agree on some things and not on others, but I'll tell you one thing we both agree on, I think, is that uh, he's still in this race. Uh, oops notwithstanding, Rick Perry is still a viable candidate in this race, and I continue to be confident in his chances. Well, uh, let's start with the oops, though, because you know when the oops happened, uh, it seems like everybody rushed to write his political obituary. But 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 he handled it. Well, I, I'm curious what you think. I thought he handled it pretty well in the in the subsequent 24 or 36 hours. Yeah, the 24 to 36 hours afterwards, both uh, the governor and his campaign, I thought, responded in uh, exactly the way that Herman Cain's campaign did not in the wake of the sexual harassment obligations. They were uh, every place all the time. They were as transparent and as open about uh, the governor's mistake as um, as they could have been. In fact, they fully acknowledged it, embraced it, turned it to their advantage. And I thought that he showed a lot of grace, uh, uh, honestly, in, um, in admitting uh, to what is really a human foible. We all have those brain freezes. That's the nice way to say it. Um, and, you know, his is magnified because he's on a bigger stage. And running for president sure. is different than having a brain freeze in your, a brain freeze in your, in your personal life. But... Um, the, the, the substance of what he said in that debate, other than the brain freeze, and the substance of what he said in the foreign policy debate on Saturday night, I would argue were actually pretty uh, solid, uh, certainly compared to the, the other people up on those two stages. And um, again, to the degree that we're willing to forgive human foibles, I don't think he's weaker at the end of this week uh, than he was at the beginning of it. And contrary to what everyone thinks, I honestly think he's still a viable candidate. Right, right. Well, uh, you know, forgiveness of human foibles is one thing, but uh, is, is that really what the GOP primary electorate is uh, seeking to forgive in him? Is, uh, or, or are there, there more substantive policy and, and maybe even aesthetic issues that, uh, that have come up? Uh, you know, I, 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 I have a hard time believing that, uh, that he dropped as precipitously as he did from polling around 30 percent to polling uh, in the single digits uh, simply because he appeared unknowledgeable in some ways. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a much broader package of things, was it not? I mean, there was, yeah. you know, we've talked about this at uh, length. There was uh, immigration, apparently, was the one that really hurt him badly. I think he didn't come across as presidential. I think he came across as some combination of angry and tired and unknowledgeable um, uh, in, in those debates. And look, the public is watching these debates. I saw the, the Nielsen ratings on these debates that have aired uh, so far. Uh, they're significantly greater than what you would normally expect for, uh, for the viewership of, of, of debates at this point in the cycle. People really are paying attention. And unfortunately for Governor Perry, that's really the view that they have of him. The debates have become a defining element of his public persona. But elsewhere on the campaign trail, where he's given uh, speeches in uh, smaller settings, retail politics, uh, except for that goofy New Hampshire uh, speech that everyone has made so much hay of, he's actually done fine. Um, and, and reports from our reporters on the road and from other reporters on the road, the governor's done fine. Look, you can take issue with the governor's positions on policy, and people do. And that may be, as mm -hmm. you say, immigration or HPV or now after Saturday, the degree to which he may be willing to zero out the Israeli foreign aid budget and make them come begging at the beginning of every year based on some criteria he lays down. That, those things may actually not be benefiting him enormously. On the other hand, um, what has gotten him bedeviled, I think, is largely problems of, of style and not substance. And at the end of the day, uh, somebody will have to stand next to Mitt Romney and be a plausible not Romney candidate, as you and I have talked about many times before. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. Herman, Herman Cain was dead before sexual harassment. If sexual harassment didn't kill Herman Cain's chances, the answer he gave on the Libya question in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel editorial board meeting of today. I don't know if you've seen it, but everyone's talking I did. about it on Twitter. Yes. I mean, you know, somebody suggested the other day that the entire Herman Cain presidency or presidential campaign, I should say, is, is, is an Andy Kaufman joke from the great beyond. And in some ways, the surrealism of the Cain campaign is worthy of Andy Kaufman. Um, Newt Gingrich, I'm sorry, Joshua, maybe you agree with this. He is not going to get into White House unless he goes on the tour. He is not going to be president. He is not going to be vice president. At the end of the day, Rick Perry is still the only viable alternative to Romney, who is simply not closing the deal. 
Newt, uh, though, I will tell you, uh, and, and I'm, I'm stealing this from someone, and I forget who I'm stealing it from. It was somebody that I saw on Twitter, uh, uh, one of the, uh, probably one of the Washington Examiner universe of, uh, of, of, of writers. Right. Um, but uh, Newt is really benefiting from uh, our desire, and I say our conservative movement desire, uh, to see somebody who can really beat up Barack Obama in a debate. Uh, and and uh, who, who better than, than this fellow who's performed uh, so well in all the debates? I mean, I mean, the, but he can't I, I, win. I, 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 but he I, I, cannot win. The, he cannot win the White House. You know that. No, no, no. I, well, I actually happen to agree. I mean, I think that he's, uh, you know, his. I, I, I struggle to see a map for him in in, in the general election. Nonetheless, though, uh, you know, I, I do think that his his current rise is. I mean, I mean, it's predicated on two things. Uh, first of all, he's he's the not mid of the moment, in which you and I have talked about many times. In fact, right. I think one of us actually predicted the rise of Newt uh, as yep. the next not mid. Um, and uh, but but it's also fueled by by the realization that he would be uh, he would give a fantastic showing uh, against the president uh, in 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 a televised debate. Now I, I seriously doubt that will come to pass, but um, it's 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 quite a prospect. But let me let me ask you this. Well, uh, let, but, let, but, let, but let me let me read one second. Is the sure. reason you think that he would not uh, survive in a general election? I mean, leaving his debating skills uh, to the side, I would agree with you that he is a forceful debater. If a little angry uh, at times, I'm not sure that he's exactly Mr. Warmth. Maybe we, we don't want Mr. Warmth as president. Yeah. Maybe, as, maybe as as is the president. I mean, I think that's, they're very similar in that respect. Well, I think the president is cool as opposed to warm. I think that Newt is hot as opposed to warm. Um, I'm not sure but, that the president is as angry as Newt is. I think the president is aloof. I think it would be aloof versus angry. But do you, do you think the reason that Newt would be disqualified – uh, or that he wouldn't win, let's just say, not literally disqualified, is because of his mm -hmm. ideological apostasy on certain issues or because of his personal baggage? Which is it? Well, uh, both obviously would be exploited to the hilt uh, okay. by what is uh, very, fairly certain to be a well-oiled uh, re-election campaign. I mean, I think that those are vulnerabilities, albeit known, and so in as much as they are known vulnerabilities, they're not as dire as, uh, you know, well, again, we've seen the, the, the Kane campaign that illustrate to us what happens when uh, previously unknown vulnerabilities are brought to light. Um, uh, nonetheless, I, I just, I, I really struggle to see, uh, I struggle to see a map for him and I struggle to see his, uh, his, his natural constituency. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, Newt brings to mind, and I don't want to push the comparison too far, but, you know, brings to mind the famous quip of the, uh, the socialite who, uh, told Adlai Stevenson that all the intelligent people would be voting for him, uh, to which Stevenson replies, yes, but I need a majority. Uh, yeah, uh I think... I think I, I mean I think I think Newt uh, you know will tend to attract I mean he'll attract the anti-Obama vote sure but but uh, but uh, you know he his 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 environment is 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 an is an audience of people who would attend American Enterprise Institute events right I mean there are yeah. people who would attend uh, you know maybe events you know at, at my own place of employment the Texas Public Policy Foundation I mean I mean he, he's a smart guy he has smart ideas or whatever his ideological apostasies. Uh, but I'm not, uh, you know, I, I don't think I don't think that wins national elections. I think I think it wins national elections are, are broad themes, uh, what I'll term aesthetic values. Uh, nobody gets into into office, or at least they certainly haven't since the late 19th century. Nobody gets into office based upon the nuances of a party platform, and no one gets into office based upon very detailed policy prescriptions. Even the contract with America, I guarantee you that that uh, that uh, very few people could name all the planks of the contract. I can't even recall what all of them were at this point. But um, I, I just I think I think it's 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 a self limiting appeal, and that's not a condemnation of him. It's just uh, you know it's just it's just who he is. It's the niche that he occupies. I think his anger uh, makes him the candidate of uh, of what he's against, as opposed to the candidate of what he's for. I'm not sure what Newt's for. I know what Newt's against, and it's a range of things that goes from Obama to the media. But I'm not well, sure what Newt, I'm not sure what Newt is. For. And the reality is people want to vote for something as much as against something. And even if your side of the ideological spectrum may be allied against Obama, at the end of the day, they want to know what they're voting for and not just against. I think that's one problem for Newt. I think the other problem for Newt is nobody took him seriously as a candidate, really. And he's about to enter the vetting stage. And the press and his opponents are starting already to have a field day with the reams of material that Newt's candidacy provides. And I, I just, I think that by the time this vetting process is done, Newt's going to fall right back down. Uh, he was not a serious candidate. He is not a serious candidate. And as I said, I don't think he has a chance of winning.
And then after that, do you think it cycles uh, to the governor? Well, I don't think Santorum is um, has, is going to be. Uh, he, he won't have a, a bump. I don't think Santorum is going right. to is going to rise. Um, I think Bachman is done. I think right. H- Huntsman. We should pronounce the body. Uh, I think clinically dead. I actually um, don't think so. I'll, I'll, and, and, and not to interrupt you there. I, I, I think uh, based on yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put it this way: when when, when Eric Erickson starts uh, talking publicly about uh, and, 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 and you know and Eric's a friend of mine, but uh, you know when he starts talking about publicly about. Uh, Maybe reassessing John Huntsman. There, there, there may be some life left in the old dog yet. There is, there is uh, I'm, not, I'm, there is nothing about John Huntsman ideologically, from what I can tell, that ought to appeal to the Eric Erickson wing of the party. A guy, he, a guy uh, who tweets about science uh, 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 being a no-brainer, global warming, and evolution, and all that sort of stuff, is too moderate for this party in the primary. Don't you think? Uh, well, I, I, I actually, uh, I can, I can think of, and I'm sure they don't want to be named on blogging heads, but I can think of a number of conservatives who, who are uh, uh, taking a second look at him and pronouncing him not as bad as they thought. Uh, so it remains to be seen if that is going to it's praising, praising with faint damn, actually, isn't it? I'm sorry. That's praising with faint damn. He's not as bad as I thought. Um, well, that's, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that, that's almost the entire field, right? I mean, I mean, it's, uh, it's not just, not just him. I, I, I actually, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think we're going to see Hunt's mania and he's going to, you know, pop out into 20% or anything like that. But um, I'm, I'm just not convinced he's gone yet. I really, I really am not. I think the chance of Newt, Men- Newt Mentum continuing a little bit longer is greater than the, arri- the chance of an arrival of, uh, of Hunt's mania. Hunt's mania would require him to be above the asterisks in the polls. In every single poll that comes out now in Iowa and New Hampshire, Huntsman doesn't even have anybody saying they're voting. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there are people. All, all I can say is that there are people taking a second look at him, and uh, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not among them, so I'm not trying to imply that. But uh, right. I, I have been surprised at the folks who were willing to give him a second what look. What I, what I want to know is, is your wing of the party, the Trevino wing of the party, which is more conservative <laughs> than not an army of one going yes. to Go going to be comfortable in the end if if the the people who disagree with us are right and romney is inevitable will you be in a position would you support mitt romney if it came down to romney versus obama i think uh in as much as i am a stand-in for the party in general which is uh, likely a tremendous error to make of analysis uh, yep. but uh, let's run with it because i like the america that would create yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I, I, I happen to think that, uh, that almost everybody in the end, uh, there's going to be an intensity gap, but, uh, but I do think they're all going to vote for whomever the nominee is, be it Mitt or anyone else. Now, I heard Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council the other day hedge, hedge, hedge when asked this question by Chris Matthews. He is obviously still shopping around. And you know well, the, the, it's, the, it's, the it's question is, is Ron, well, I understand that, but you know it's two months to it's just less than two months to the Iowa caucus. So here's my question: If Romney ends up being the guy, is it going to be like McCain, where the party goes, ah, crap, and you get non-enthusiastic turnout? Maybe you don't get everybody, but you don't get anybody passionate for Romney. Um, uh, I mean, and, and here's the thing: you can't really offset Romney with anybody who creates more fire on the right wing of the Republican Party than Palin did for McCain. So it's not. As no, if I don't agree with that. No, no, you I, don't, I don't agree, agree with that. that. No, no, I don't agree with that. Okay, Look, tell uh, me I, someone. You know, tell me somebody who, if they're on a Romney ticket, would excite enough enthusiasm to offset the lack of enthusiasm that a Romney candidacy would bring. Oh look, I mean, I, I think I think there there are many people who would run through brick walls for uh, to get Marco Rubio uh, one heartbeat away from the White House. Uh, uh, you know, and I, I I I I think that that uh, uh, you know Palin acknowledging the bump that Palin provided uh, to to the McCain campaign. I don't think that she uh, by any means was uh, uh, unique or replaceable uh, in in that role. I do think there are people now who would excite similar uh, uh, passions among the base, and you know, with an intelligent. VP pick and, uh, you know, yeah. properly, I mean, I mean, look, let me put it this way. If, if the Romney campaign stretching back, you know, half a decade now has shown itself adept at anything, it's pretty good at, at, um, what I will, well, I shouldn't say pretty good. It's, it's, it's been good enough to get the job done so far, uh, at, uh, at, 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 at coalition building. And, and you have people who look at people are going to forgive. They really are, uh, whether it's Mitt or anyone else. Is, uh, is, but Josh, up. Josh, is he going to develop a core set of principles that can be counted on between now and the general election? Because the problem is, his greatest enemy in the in the in the general election is not going to be the conservative wing of the Republican Party, and it's not going to be President Obama. It's going to be YouTube. 
This general election is going to be Mitt versus YouTube. Every time Mitt says something, somebody within nine seconds, some kid in the basement of his mother's house in Dubuque, is going to be able to go call up a video where Mitt completely contradicts himself. And yeah. the, cor the, cor yeah. the core set of principles problem for Mitt is not going away, and he's only given ample material to the, to the president's campaign in the last few weeks. And so I wonder how your side is going to be comfortable with somebody whose in inconsistencies will have to be explained away. Uh, I think I think a lot of it's going to be swept under the rug. I really do. I you think, do. I think people are going. I, well, look. I, I think I think people are going to are going to fall in line as they tend to. And this is not a Republican trade or a Democratic trade. It's just how it tends to be when you have a nominee. I mean, it's 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 going to be a rare. I, I'm trying to think back uh, to a time when the party didn't uh, even even in 2008, which admittedly was you know, which I would submit by the way. I mean, I think McCain lost uh, 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 partly because he was saddled with the George W. Bush legacy, and partly because his campaign organization was really really terrible. Uh, right. I, I I don't subscribe to the theory that that uh, depressed base turnout actually hurt McCain. I don't think that I don't think that the conservatives and the and the Republican base were insufficiently enthusiastic for him. I think that that was a self-inflicted uh, probably with circumstance but, uh, but but partly with the campaign itself. I think that's that, that's what brought the loss in. And I think that if 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 a Romney candidacy were to come about uh, in the general election and if he lost, uh, I think it would be uh, traceable to the same sources. Frankly, uh, I, I have a very hard time seeing conservatives simply staying home and and, and not voting for the anti-Obama. They, they, they want Obama beat so badly that they're prepared to do it. Take whatever number of clothespins need to materialize on their noses as they walk into ballot box. They're going to put those clothespins on. I, I I I suspect as much. Yes, and right. uh, and and not just conservatives. By the by, I think I think there's a lot of people at this point who who feel that way. I, I want to st come back to Perry, if you don't mind, please. You know, sure. uh, uh, we've we've moved past the prospect of Perry being the nominee to the inevitability um, uh, of of Romney, and I want to go back to Perry because, uh, you know, I, as a student of politics, I'm rooting for what would be the greatest contrast election since Goldwater and Johnson, which would be Perry versus sure. Obama. Yes, um, it would. I worry that the Romney Obama election would be too nice, would be too polite, by which I mean too, oh, I, too boring. <laughs> I don't think there's any danger of that at all. I think, uh, I think, I mean, I think you're entirely right that, that that if it was Governor Perry versus President Obama, that it would be a tremendous ideological contrast that would actually be good for the country in many ways. It would be, be very healthy. Election. We would just basically let's air it out, you know, like in some families, uh, we're right. just going to fight yeah. like hell, and then we're going to make up and go on. And I think the country, However, the country would prefer to have a general election that was more like a big ethnic family at dinner than a pinter play where nobody says anything for three acts and then in the fourth act everybody commits suicide. I worry that a Romney versus Obama election would be more like a pinter play than my family dinner. I, I, I see. Uh, God save us from a national pinter play uh, just in general. Uh, but I have a very difficult time seeing a Romney-Obama match uh, being anything but uh, bloody with daggers drawn from day one. Um, I think both sides will fight like hell, and uh, and, and and by the end of it, uh, there's going to be a general exhaustion. So you don't we'll believe be you, don't, you don't buy the argument that a Romney campaign would be constructed more in sadness than anger, where he'd be talking in in muted tones. You know, oh, we like the president personally; he's a historic figure, but at the end of the day, he just wasn't competent enough to do the job, and he had three years, and he couldn't make it work, and. We just need a change because a lot of people are saying that's the strongest argument that Romney has and one made in sadness rather than anger is much more likely to be an effective tool for attracting independence, whereas the Perry campaign would be conducted more in anger than sadness and that, that might actually put people off. You don't buy the argument that Romney's better off playing that muted sadness resignation game. Uh no, I don't. I, well, um, I mean, were I advising the Romney campaign, I suppose I would, I would, I would advise him to go for the hilt. But uh, you know, I, 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 I just have a very difficult time seeing, uh, you know, based upon really his his performance in two thousand eight. We'll see if it repeats itself yep. uh, in this cycle. Um, but uh, you know, he he had a pretty his his campaign had some pretty sharp elbows, and I don't see any evidence that that's changed. I mean, he's yeah. he is he didn't win last time, but. Uh, uh, I think he is well aware that this is this. Uh, you know, th th there's no third act for him. I mean, if he doesn't do it this time, I, I, I see no prospect for him. How many? How many times did his? How many? How many times did his dad run for president? Uh, George Romney. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Twice, three yeah. times. Well, yeah.
Yeah, but uh, chip d- off the old era hair. too. Uh, yeah, d- different era and different hair. Is that what you said? No, no, it's a different different era. Oh, right, different era. <laughs> Probably different hair also. Actually, um, well, who, who, who can say at this point? How, how yeah. does the, how does the Perry campaign come back from this? What do you think the best strategy for Perry to to, uh, to, to pursue a comeback is? Well, uh, look, you know, we, we've all we've all read and and uh, likely discussed uh, what the advent of Joe Albach at the campaign signifies, and and of course, I have no firsthand knowledge of this, but uh, you know, if I were to read the tea leaves, I would say that the very adroit handling of the oops. Uh, affair, uh, combined with his pretty good performance at the foreign policy debate, uh, indicate to me that there is uh, a lot more of substance uh, going on at the campaign, perhaps behind the scenes, than than uh, we in the general public might realize. And I think that his way back, uh, you know, mapping that out, uh, the must-win state for him is likely South Carolina. Uh, oh, I, I, I he compl- can... completely agree. I think yeah. if, if, if it goes, yeah. if he loses in Iowa big, and I think as of today. Kellyanne Conway's uh, company that does polling in Iowa, I think Perry mm-hmm. was sixth, actually. Um, yeah. We know he's not going to win New Hampshire. Romney appears to be as close to running away with New Hampshire as Romney's capable of. So yeah, you get will. to South Carolina, and if Perry doesn't win South Carolina, I think it's very hard to see how he goes on. I think I, I, I think South Carolina is a must win, and, and then I think uh, Florida, if if not a must win, is is certainly a strong show. Uh, so 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 that yeah. line about zeroing out Israel's foreign aid is likely to do well in uh, in Dade County. You think? <laughs> How many of them are? Uh, I mean, I, and I actually don't know the answer to this, but uh, you know, what proportion right. of the Republican primary electorate is 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 uh, is, is Jewish in Florida? Are, I really don't know. Joe Lee, Joe um, Lieberman type conservative Jews. Um, I wonder, actually, but probably yeah, some. I, I mean, I you know. know, some. I suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, enough to make a difference. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I, uh, you know, it's 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 an easy it's an easy line to uh, take advantage of. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I really think that I really think that Perry's best uh, strategy for coming back is to hold on to the side of the boat or to switch, you know, analogies from from you know from a nautical theme to uh, to uh, uh, running. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, this guy has the money right. and the experience uh, experience himself, having run nine uh, elections and won nine elections, and the staff. Uh, if he can just avoid stepping on his tie or a part of his anatomy that is perhaps south of his tie uh, as he goes forward between now and, and the beginning of, of caucus and primary season, he has the capacity to be in this for the longish haul. He has money assuming that the fundraising tap hasn't been turned off by his uh, poor performances in the debate. Um, right. You know, it's a marathon. And if he can hold on, I think that what happens after Iowa is that you really do see the Indians begin to fall. Uh, if Michelle Bachman doesn't win Iowa, she's out of this race. I think we can agree on that. I think if Santorum mm-hmm. doesn't win Iowa, he's out of this race. And it looks to me like Iowa is going to be won by some combination. Some, somewhere in that one, two, three will be um, Gingrich and Romney and probably Perry or Kane. I, I suspect that we're going to begin to see the bottom drop out of the Kane campaign here. Perry may inch back up into third place. In fact, there was a poll I saw today. I'm trying to remember where it was. Maybe it was the CNN poll that had Kane and Perry effectively tied for third. Kane has fallen so much that maybe Perry so. and Kane yeah. are tied. And, you know, if I'm right about Gingrich being a, a, an a, you know, ephemeral, uh, it may very well go back to Perry in second place here between now and January 3rd. Perry may have bottomed out early enough. Um, it may get after Iowa to be just a handful of these guys. Um, nine, nine million dollars is going to keep the Kane campaign going uh, a lot longer than it otherwise would. I'll just posit that. But, but, here, I, uh, but, here, but here's the thing. If Kane falls out, if, if the polls really just plummet in the next, mm-hmm. uh, say, four weeks, um, I'm, he can have nine million dollars only once, but if he, but if he, if his appeal drops off and people begin to focus on the substantive problems with Kane as a candidate and the Kane campaign as a campaign, I'm mm-hmm. not sure that all the money in the world is going to hold him in this race. Now, no, it, it, it won't hold him in the race, but it will extend the book tour. Well, it will. That's true. I mean, yes. isn't, isn't, isn't that, that kind of what Gingrich is on? Also, a book tour. I mean. <laughs> These fake, these fake campaigns. What are we going to do with these fake campaigns? Well, I, I, I actually, uh, I, 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 I think Newt, uh, Newt may see a path for himself at this point. But uh, let me, let me switch tacks briefly and, and ask you this because I've just been struck by the extraordinary uh, and overwhelming and excessive 
run of debates that we've had this yeah. autumn. I mean, it's it, it's really astonishing, and it is. from a from a from a conservative perspective, uh, it's it, 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 it's it's even a bit appalling to see uh, uh, you know what's what's perceived. I think uh, rightly to some extent as as the media. Um, which I guess you're part of that, Evan, uh, uh, dictating you know what the what the agenda is, what we talk about, and 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 what the what the course of events is. You you uh, got you in, guys in you guys system. will blame you guys will blame. I say this with a smile, Josh, although you can't see it. You guys will blame the media for anything. There is nothing. Will, there is nothing that you will not blame the media for. Now the problem will, with there being too many Republican <laughs> debates is we did it. It's our fault that there were too many Republican debates. Jeez. Well, no, here's here, here's the thing: is 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 you you, you all you media what, people the, the you, royal you, you, you set these up, yeah, but, the royal but, but 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 all of us, the royal we, you know, we accept these debates. I mean, we, we actually say, oh, sure, what a great idea to have right. uh, you know Politico and MSNBC. You know, determine who the conservative challenger is to Obama. Oh, which is please, in, 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 Politico and MSNBC. First of all, there've been two debates on CNBC, which is two more times than I'd ever watched CNBC in my life before. Okay. Well, again, it's 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 amazing that it keeps happening. So, so my question to you, though, is: yeah. Is this ever going to happen again? Is, is anybody going to look back on this, even on even on, even on the, the the media side? Is anybody yeah. going to say, "Wow, what happened in 2011 was a great idea, and we should repeat that experience"? Is, well, is well, it, I, I I think that if you just simply argued on whether this number of debates is a good thing or a bad thing for democracy, you could probably say, yeah, it does seem a little excessive. The problem for that line of thinking, though, is we have learned something from these debates. These debates have actually really told us something about these candidates. What have we learned? Mitt Romney, steady as she goes. The guy has largely turned in very good performances in this debate. He's been the most charming and winning and unflappable, not perfectly unflappable, but largely unflappable guy uh, in the midst of all this craziness. Um, we learned that Herman Cain was charismatic in these debates, which caused his rise, and now we see that Herman Cain has no there there, and that's call it, causing, I think, to some degree, uh, along with the sexual harassment stuff, his fall. Uh, Gingrich's whole um, surge is entirely because of the debates. Perry's plummet is entirely because of the debates. Hunt's mania is itself a non- starter because the guy's not been good in the debates. He's got a terrible sense of humor. Bachman has seemed a little unhinged. Santorum has not distinct. I mean, I think you go through these debates, we've actually learned something about these candidates that we might not have known otherwise. And unless, think, you, unless you think that what we're learning about these candidates doesn't square with the reality of those candidates, then I think it's been a useful exercise for those of us who may not know them as well as you do. I think that the actual effect of the debates uh, is, is really limited to two candidates. I think that uh, Newt Gingrich has benefited and Rick Perry has been harmed by the debates. I think beyond that, there's not a lot of outcomes um, that likely would not have happened anyway. Uh, and I think that, you know, so, so, so I actually take a much narrower view. I don't think, I don't think it's been this expansive learning experience for the nation, for the, for, for, for the field in general. I can think you, can you I think, not, I think it's you, helped yeah. Newt and I think it's her Perry. Can you not argue though that what, that, that being president of the United States is, is largely an exercise in persuading people to do or not do what you articulate uh, for the country? I mean, really, uh, uh, Perry, let's say Perry gets to be president. Perry's going to have to address the nation. He's going to have to, to address Congress. He's going to have to mm -hmm. deal with world leaders. He's essentially going to have to win a series of mini debates every couple of weeks for four years. Rick Perry cannot uh, uh, execute a Paint Creek strategy uh, as president for four or eight years where he doesn't debate, doesn't deal with the media really, where he just basically governs as a retail politician. I mean, the... How you think, how you fare yeah. in the crossfire uh, when you're attacked by your own party and when you're attacked by the other party is, I think, an instructive thing to see. It tells you what kind of a person you are, what kind of a politician you are. You know, I would submit that the only the only experience that a president really has while he's president that compares to a a debate, a campaign era debate, is probably open season with the White House press corps. I think that's the closest it comes. I am hard pressed to think of any other situation in which the president of the United States, whomever it is, right. is subjected to the kind of uh, uh, questioning and challenging in a public forum uh, that takes place in a debate. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm not as persuaded by that. I think that. But shouldn't, uh, it's, but shouldn't it's, Perry and the other candidates be able to handle that kind of questioning? 
Don't we don't we have the right to see how they fare under stress and under pressure? After all, what is well, the presidency? Do. It's a we big do. pressure cooker. Yeah, well, I'm I, I'm not disputing the legitimacy of a debate per se. I'm I'm disputing the legitimacy of a zillion of them, uh, and, and and under these circumstances, look, look, I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, like Karen Tumulty, for example, is not a person I want vetting Republican candidates. I mean, she has nothing to add to this. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's really it's, you're, you're going to hate it, on Karen Tumulty? Yeah. Really, you're going to hate on Karen Tumulty? <laughs> I'm surely not the first. Put me uh, down. Fact, as, put I'm me not. down as pro Tumulty. I don't. I don't think that. A, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that a reporter who is asking tough questions and she asked, I thought, a legitimate question in that debate. I know the one you're thinking of, where she asked the governor about some version of the crony capitalism question. The man should be in the position to answer that question. Uh, he, he's he's a, he's good at, at pushing back against pesky reporters. We've seen it for a long time. I mean. I'll, 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 I'll tell you this, though. I want I want uh, if it's if it's my party, whether my party is Republican or Democrat, yeah. uh, I want that that party's candidate to be accountable to people who represent uh, uh, the party. And, uh, you know, you media types. Uh, and, and, and again, I'm exaggerating here, but right. uh, th this is not that. And that's not what we've seen. So and, who's going to be in the White House? But who's going to be in the White House press room when the president has to talk to the press? Eric Erickson? And uh, and Rush Limbaugh and Jeff Gannon, who's going to be in the press corps when the, I mean, it, it, the Washington Post, New York Times, newspapers from around the country are all going to be in the White House press room if the man is elected president. Is he just not going to take questions from the likes of Karen Tumulty? Well, I mean, I mean, how, how often does that happen, though? I mean, uh, you know, and actually, you may know this because I don't recall, but you know, the, the the current president went an extraordinarily long time without without an open forum uh, presser. Uh, I'm always irritated by yeah. the low number of, of of press conferences that presidents have because I think we have a right to hear from. Them. I mean, look, well, I, I, yeah. I tend to agree with you, but but, but but my point is, it doesn't happen as much, and so you it, guys, it, you so guys should valid. not accept so many debates. I mean, let, let, let's Agreed. let's be honest. You are if, if if you believe the media is guilty of putting on too many debates, you all are enabling that to happen. I, I would actually tend to agree. I think it's uh, the, you know, but 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 the, the, the campaigns. I mean, here and, and here's the catch twenty two, or maybe this isn't a catch twenty two, but uh, you know, the the, the the campaigns that have an interest in shutting this down can't do it. The Perry campaign can't do it because they can't afford. Because uh, they tried it, remember, right? They floated that trial yeah. balloon and says that maybe we'll, we'll just say in the bait and look what happened to them. Right, and that was uh, pre-oops, no. actually. At this point now, he can't not debate yeah. because he looks like he's running from a fight. Exactly. So, 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 so that can't happen. Uh, you know, Nude obviously benefits from it. Romney has nothing to lose by continuing to do these. So there's right. nobody of sufficient stature to stop it. Um, well, but, there's a, but, but there's again, a larger you know, problem. There's a larger problem, which is why should Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina, as the four earliest caucus and primary states, monopolize mm -hmm. the country's attention, or the attention of these candidates, I should say, um, when the rest of the country wants to know who these people are, wants to understand who they are. The fact is, if we don't live in those four states, we don't get a good look at these guys except in these debates. And I think the presidency is an important job. These folks want to be president. They should be out there auditioning for the job, not uh, only immediately before it comes time to vote, I think it's a good thing for us to see how they make their way across the trail. And these debates, for better or worse, end up as a way that uh, it's like a reality show. It's like America's got talent or America's got lack of talent, as the case may be. Um, we should be able to see these folks uh, 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 in, in combat. And, um, you know, I tend to be pro-debate, Josh. What can I tell you? Other people have sports. I have this. I like the well, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they are entertaining, uh, however numerous they may become. They are. Uh, I'll just say this: the uh, uh, you know, and, and, and I don't want to romanticize the past over much. However, I will note that uh, pre prior to the era in which it was possible for the country to see their candidates up close and personal all the time, uh, before television, before rapid travel, um, Americans did a fairly good job depending on your opinion of John Tyler, the traitor, uh, of uh, picking their presidents. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily sold on the notion that this is a prerequisite to good democracy right. or a good republic. Well, well um, but, but back, back then, John Tyler's campaign didn't have the ability to tweet and, uh, and do all the other things that the campaigns are perfectly happy to do using uh, the, the tools of technology to go around the media either. I mean, you know, it's, it's a mutual, it's, it has to be mutual disarmament. If we want to go back to the old days, then we all have to go back to the old days. Otherwise, I think anything is fair game. Can, can I, I know we have not very much time left. Can I ask you a question? 
Sure. One of the things that struck me, speaking of this notion of the media and the Republicans and where it all comes down, at least five of these candidates I can think of has run a portion of, of his or her campaign where the opponent is not Obama, it's the media. Um, yeah. You know, Gingrich has made sport of every moderator and attacked the media relentlessly. Yeah. I, th I think unfairly, I think he's doing it now because he knows he gets a rise out of the kind of people who watch and attend these debates, but he's attacked the media. Um, we know that the Perry campaign, uh, by way of Mrs. Perry, believes that uh, the, the, the press has been unfair to the governor because of his faith. We know that the Kane campaign uh, uh, believes that the press has been responsible for undermining him, that all the sexual harassment stuff has much to do about nothing, and that, in fact, Politico and other media organizations have targeted him. Um, sure. And on and on and on. So I want to know whether you think the media, from a conservative perspective, is a good punching bag for a candidate to have and whether the attacks are justified. Uh, well, I guess that's two separate questions. They uh, are. Do, 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 do they work? Uh, yeah, they, 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 well, they work to an extent. They work to the extent to where they were uh, up to the point at which they become patently ludicrous, uh, claiming that uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this fellow's last name, but Josh uh, Crossour. Crossour, yes. Crossour, thank you. Uh, the, you know that 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 was that was the bridge too far. You know, alleging falsely that he was related to uh, 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 one of Kane's accusers was was a big you know one of one of Mark Block's many missteps, right? So right. so so that that doesn't get traction. Uh, but there is a perception, and, uh, and and it's not unjustified that the media in general uh, is is tilted against the Republican slash conservative playing field. And so, in, in, in that light, uh, if you are trying to appeal to the primary audience, uh, there's there, there's traction there. I don't think that's that's in dispute. I, and, and actually, I think it's kind of a good strategy if you're if you're a new gingrich there is uh there is mileage to be gained by uh deftly uh humiliating some hapless member of the press corps who happens to phrase a question inadequately you know but but he was such he was such a jerk to maria bartiromo the other day what was wrong with maria bartiromo asking the question about health care newt found the question to be somehow intellectually illogical or unfair mm -hmm. 30 seconds to fix health care i'm not going to answer your question you know what you want to be president, answer the damn question. And, and if she says to you, you can have as much time as you want and you still don't answer the question, then your entire line of argument against her is, quite frankly, fraudulent. I am uh, a thousand percent in favor of being exceedingly kind to uh, Ms. Bartiromo, uh, wherever she may be encountered. However, yeah. uh, I have to say, I don't think that was uh, tactically unwise of Newt. I think it... Uh, it actually garnered him some some respect in corners where where he may have needed it. And look, people want to see a fighter, and people uh, believe that uh, that if uh, somebody's willing to stand up to who are perceived as the arbiters uh, yeah. of American life and culture and right thought, then they're going to stand up to the president. And I don't think that's totally inaccurate. But at the end of the day, attacking the press is easy, and governing is hard. Move on to the part that's hard, and demonstrate to us you can do it. You can attack the media as a pundit or as a Fox commentator or as an author. But let's see you do something presidential. That's I, I want to see if Newt Gingrich can win the presidency. I want it. I want to see Newt Gingrich be presidential. I want to see Newt Gingrich demonstrate to me that he has the capacity to govern with empathy and compassion, to not just be the angry guy. And but so let me let me posit this though: yeah. uh, if, if if you are of the type of individual who believes that an essential part of being presidential, as we say, is pairing the institutions of perceived liberal dominance, uh, then smacking down the press is it, it shows that that's a presidential act. But I think at the end uh, of the day, that's not going to that's not going to win him the nomination, and it's not going to win him the presidency. Well, I, I, well, I, I, I tend to agree with you. However, uh, I think there are factors external to that. I don't think that's uh, indicative of the failure of that strategy. Now, what about this John Dickerson email to the Bachman campaign that the Bachman campaign got accidentally? suggesting that given the fact that Bachman was so far down in the polls that the CBS questioners would not be asking her as many questions as the other candidates. Do you have anything wrong with that? Uh, uh, well, let me let me say from the outset, I did not. I, I, I read about this uh, from email chain, so I didn't actually yeah. read the press reports on it. So I, I don't know what the what the what, what it actually said. So correct me if I'm if I'm misunderstanding uh, anything here, because I haven't I didn't didn't pay a lot of attention to that, right. which I guess makes me as bad as CBS, right? Um, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I think in, in terms of newsroom management, uh, these kind of value judgment calls are uh, it. it, it 
it, it doesn't strike me offhand as anything particularly wrong. Uh, we don't have a fairness doctrine, and I'm, I'm actually right. glad we don't have a fairness doctrine. So, uh, so be it. But uh, do, I, I could do, 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 do you blame the, the, the moderators of these debates for uh, giving uh, more questions to people who are ahead in the polls, or do you think that what they're doing is well, reaffirming the preconceived idea that certain people are in this race and certain people are out? I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I struggle to uh, to say that uh, the debates in general have been well moderated. Uh, you know, if, if anything, I've been struck by uh, the amount of attention given in several of the debates to uh, some of the uh, uh, lower performing candidates. So it's, uh, I, but I, I don't. If what you're asking is whether I see a systemic problem, I don't. I just think it's uh, general dysfunction. All right. Well, Josh, I see yeah. we're at 45 minutes. Is that a problem? I think. We're I'm sorry. Probably, what's that? I think we're probably coming to the end here. Well, we, we are. However, however, we have four minutes left, and okay, I want to ask you uh, about the Eurozone crisis, because it is the most important story that is not getting enough attention. It has the capacity to tear everything down. Yeah. Uh, to paraphrase the debate moderator, 30 seconds, go. What do we do about it? It's going to be a short conversation. I have no idea what on earth to do about it. I mean, I, I, Great, I don't, that's two of us. <laughs> I don't feel like I've got even a clue, and I'm, I'm always uh, amazed when I get up in the morning and listen to the radio, and I hear that overnight the... The various markets overseas have gone up or gone down on the basis of is Greece okay or is Italy okay or what are we going to do? I, the whole thing is just mystifying to me. Uh, if you think that our country is poorly run, my my response would be go take a look at how they're running a, a number of these countries over in Europe. It just seems like their political system and their economic systems are just so screwy. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, there's spill off that affects us. And I just I, I'd like it if the world were less interconnected, but I think these days it's inevitable. I have had a, a French journalist and a, a, a British uh, public official tell me uh, in the past six weeks separately that, uh, that they think that the Eurozone crisis is going to be uh, Europe's uh, moment, uh, not unlike our crises with the Articles of Confederation, that is going to finally force a United States of Europe to emerge. And I must say that I think they're mad. I, I, I think the exact opposite is going to happen. Uh, I don't see any way in which Germans and Finns and Swedes yeah. and, and all the rest are going to want to save the Mediterranean nations. Um, and uh, but well, they're, 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 their strategic interests are just not aligned. I don't, I don't they, see well, how you can bring all exactly. those people together under one umbrella. I, 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 I completely agree. I'll tell you what worries me, though, and I think this is going to be the bellwether as to yeah. whether this is just a regional crisis or if it's a global catastrophe from a financial standpoint. The rumblings about France and its creditworthiness are what really has me worried far more than Italy. Right. So if, if, Fran if, Fran if France goes down, then the entire thing may come down. That, that everything goes down. The, yeah. the European project, NATO, and and uh, you know, the, and the U.S. economy will be plunged back into a recession. That's the issue. I would right. I would welcome a full debate on that alone. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see how many of the presidential candidates uh, on both sides, the president and the Republicans, can name the leaders of these countries, or have even the slightest <laughs> clue as to the specifics of what's going on. I mean, you know, everybody knows Sarkozy because of his wife. Once you get past Sarkozy, I think it's a lot harder. Uh, and I think a lot of these candidates are demonstrating, as Kane did today with Libya, that foreign policy is not necessarily second nature to them. I mean, I think the president, having served for these three years, is probably in a little bit better position. But I'm not sure the president was any more knowledgeable on foreign policy back when he ran for the first time in 08 than these folks are now. And yet, of course, we're going to hold them to a very high standard. We're going to mock the hell out of them for not knowing mm -hmm. this or that. And at the end of the day, I'm just not sure that that's productive for anybody. Well, God save us all from ourselves. God save and, us all. Uh, That's right. Evan, uh, thank you again for a uh, fascinating 45 minutes. Very much appreciate your taking the time. Always a spirited conversation with you, my friend. Look forward to seeing you soon. Indeed. Talk to you soon. Right, Cheers. Bye.